Well, my brother Tony and myself, we lived in um, Silvertown, which I've explained before, is like a bit of an island. It had docks either side of it, so there was, anywhere you wanted to go, you had to travel via bus, and there wasn't really much, much there in terms of uh, clubs or anything. We was fortunate enough to have like a youth club where we was and my brother Tony went into the youth club and asked if we could uh, have one of the rooms for a gym because at that point we was going to West Ham which was at the Black Lion which was obviously a bus ride and the bus that used to run from Woolwich to Chinkford Mount would be the bus you'd have to get and it was, uh, you know, you'd, you'd wait for ages and it's the typical story, wait and then three are coming along at once so, you know, it made it hard work for us to get anywhere so really it was born out of geography from where we lived. I started when I was 18 in school, because there was nothing to do. We had a few pairs of gloves from our uncles, um, some weights from local people. It was just something to do. Getting kids off the street, or kids who had nothing else to do, and that was where we started. We uh, approached the uh, youth club, we got, we got the hall, and see, at that point, boxing used to be in schools, and then they stopped it, and we got the old ring that they used to use for the schoolboy boxing in Newham. We got that, we put that into the hall and then, then we started doing the boxing, weightlifting, weight training and different sorts of sports here. As I said, it's necessities like anything, there wasn't nothing in our area to do and we were just you know, fortunate enough to have a, a youth club, which there's not many youth clubs now, so you know, there's, not, there's hardly anywhere for the kids to go, is there? I mean, you need youth clubs for the kids to do sport, meet other boys, meet other girls, you know, go on camping trips and do all them things and, and there's just not, they're not about no more. But basically that's what the, the gym still is. So the journey's quite a long journey and it's, it's like, I've, you know, like lots of things, it has twists and turns <laughs> and, and ups and downs. Um, from there we took it into our uh, uncle's pub, which uh, was the, uh, the railway tavern, it was locally known as Cundy's and he had a, he had a hall upstairs so what used to happen is the the school club, for want of a better word, would shut every six weeks, you know, for the six weeks holidays, then it would shut during half term. So then we'd be left again without nowhere to go. So we moved into Jack's pub, um, we had it upstairs in there, and then he came out of the pub, we went back to the school, <laughs> and then we got our own pub, we put it in our own pub, and um, it went from there. And during that course of time, it, obviously it adopted the name of the Peacock because one of our pubs was called the Peacock, where we put it in. That was at Freemasons Road, uh, that was a tired house with Charitons and then f what happened is we, uh, Charitons sold off a lot of pubs, we had three pubs in the area, we had the Flying Scud, the Pit's Head and the Peacock and they all went on the market because we was only tenants in them. In the beginning we was very lucky as well, like when we came into this place because as we were still a community around here, we knew everybody. And so you'd know if there was a bit of plumbing to be done, if there was a bit of electrical work to be done, if there was a, you know, all of our friends would come and say, oh, I'll do that. We'd be around here with them, you know what I mean? So we'd, we'd get it done. When that got sold off the Peacock, we moved to this premises here. Uh, we approached the Charities Commission and asked them about a little bit of help because obviously, the, I think the rates at the time was about 10 grand and, and the rent was about 10 grand and it obviously gives a bit of help with our rates. That's the only help that we did get uh, when we moved into here and then it, it, it flourished from there. And we kept the name of the Peacock because during that transition time of, of moving the uh, pubs we topped up buying a free house which was a, a, a pub and it was called the Essex Arms which was across the road from here and we changed that to the Peacock. There was a local club in our area which was called Fairburn House and lots of kids used to box for Fairburn House and they lost their premises which, which was at Canning Town and they come here so we was affiliated even before we was Peacock we still housed the Fairburn House and because we went there as kids like my brother Tony and myself and a lot of our friends we didn't say oh you come here and change the name we just kept it going as Fairburn House and um, kept that name going and then they moved to the Ruskin Arms, which uh, Jumbo Connolly started doing, and they, they took that name on. We have had so many kids uh, um, come through it, so many kids of all different types. And when it was a, an East End community, which it was in the beginning, it was, you know, and we've seen grandkids, the great grandkids of people who've come through it, you know, like. 
even when we was around the old Peacock at Freemasons Road, we like the likes of Glenn McCorry used to come train there, um, Jim McDonald. So we've always had pros coming through the gym. Even when we was in Cundies at Silvertown, I think Michael Jack had um, Winston Allen. He he come down from Wales and trained there. So you know, and he, I think he he got Bugner. Yeah. So it's always had fighters. You know, it's always had fighters around. It's never been decided who does what. I more or less do most of the stuff upstairs. I, as you know, as you know, put on promote shows and promoted all sorts of stuff. So I do that side of it. Martin does the gym side of it. But at one time we both do the gym side or whatever. Fine. So I've been the head of centre for about five years at the academy. I started off as a mentor and then became a teacher. Went from job to job and sort of ended up being the head teacher. The um, academy itself deals with students aged 14 to 19, um, mostly disengaged young people, so it's about getting them back engaged into the education system, giving them a bit more of a future outcome. A lot of our boys are set to finish without any qualifications, without any outcomes, but when they sit with us they end up achieving at least five BTECs, including functional skills, maths and English as well, so giving them some working ethics, putting them some work skills back into play, giving them work experience opportunities. Originally we started with just um, hair and beauty and sports. The gym obviously facilitated the sports really well. Then from there we moved on to performing arts and creative arts, which gave them music, photography, dance, drama, musical theatre, that sort of stuff. Um, construction then came along as well, so that was where the woodwork things were implemented. Um, work skills is quite a good one, it does CV development, work experience placements, um, dealing with um, difficult situations at work, which is good for the kids as well. Um, and then the last ones are functional skills, maths and English. So just to make sure they've got them level two grades to move on to college or anywhere else. For a lot of them it creates a, bit, a lot of bit of social skills. So even though a lot of them think they're already adults, they don't like being treated like kids. So even the idea they have to just interact with other children isn't great. Being in that gym environment and working with the different trainers, seeing the different boxers, you can see there's a different drive that comes along. Even the basics for us were please and thank yous. They walk in here and spudge you and don't want to say hello, but we start every morning with a handshake or because I'm me, I get a cuddle with them on as well, which is great. Um, we, used to, we give all of our kids a free school dinner, so everyone gets a hot meal or a sandwich or whatever it is they want. But in the early days, you just see the kids leaving all their plates on the table, crisp packets on the floor. So just watching them then educate each other about clearing away when they're finished and saying thank you to the canteen staff, them common courtesy things are real big positive changes that we see as an important factor. Schools might not always value it as highly as we do and think the education outcomes have got to be better, but that, that's a significant step for us. Please, thank you, yes, no, have a good day. It's nice, nice element. Their personality changes, you know, they come in a bit leery, you know, off the street like kids are today, not all of them. And once they're in here, it's, it's the discipline that we give them and they, they discipline and they interact with the other, with the other boys and girls as well. And they, they, everything, we're not strict, but we've got a lot of discipline in the club. The amateur coaches don't get a lot of praise and that's where they start from. You know, we, we, all, we all do it voluntary, we don't get paid for it. And it's not just me, it's, it's all, all around the country, the amateurs, and we, we, they're, the, um, they, they, they're the beginning. They start from there. But I went to Peacock gyms since I was about 15 years old. But I started training with Mark and Jim Tibbs. Done some sparring with Billy Joe Saunders. They did give me lots of, of welcome here. This is like a, a, a home to me. Danny's father, with Danny Senior, he started he started off Danny's challenge uh, to raise funds and awareness for the Down Syndrome Association, uh, and by doing that, he decided to have a, a white collar boxing match um, at the at the brewery in Chiswell Street, and then he had a few more few more bouts after that, and then sadly he passed away, um, and Danny decided that he wanted to carry, to carry the charity on. So Carol, his mum. She uh, she set it up again, and Danny's been raising money ever since. So he's had he's now had seven bouts, um, and he's he's just remarkable. He's an inspiration. He really is. You know, he, he, he trains really hard, uh, 
he trains in here with us on a Sunday and we all spar with him. You know, we all, uh, I'll get in with him and he wants to knock me out. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. But yeah, he's one of the boys, definitely. I, I want to say thank you so much for IPP for GM, but I done me so, so hard for my career. I, I, I want to say thank you to him and say thank you to all big peacock bot, bottle trainers. I want to say thank you to him. Like everywhere, and I always say it, it, every area's got their own sort of places and then the gym's a gym for the likes of ourselves and other people, other people is a community centre, other people is somewhere to come and have a cup of tea and a chat and you know for the school kids that come here and use it, it's, it's different things for different people but you know obviously our, what gives us our bit of street credibility is that, and that is because we, we do produce sportsmen whether it be the boxers, the kickboxers, arm wrestlers, <laughs> uh, you know, we've got lots of good runners here, so we, you know, so we're like quite broad in that respect. I think the most rewarding part of the time here is being able to share other people's lives and their highs, you know. Sometimes you get people coming here a little bit overweight and they lose a bit of weight and that's a great achievement for them. Then you get someone else who comes here who's never boxed before and has a few amateur fights and then you get someone who comes here and does white collar, you'll get someone who's a you know, could have been a six round fight and maybe you take him to a southern area. It's, there ain't no, you Dan, to put one thing on something and just say, oh, that, that's, that's the best thing that ever happened. You can't say that and it wouldn't be fair to, do you know what I mean? Because it's how you touch other people's lives in anything that you do, it's, that's the important thing. There's, there's always downs, there's ups and downs in everything, and obviously like we lost young Bradley, that was really sad. But again, that, that's, you know, it's all part of the journey, isn't it? It probably inspired me more, do you know what I mean? Because you think, you know, you, you want... Listen, that's how the kids, or some of the kids from this, these areas and these sorts of areas, not just County Town, not, you know, you can go to Manchester, Liverpool, anywhere, Scotland, and, and all them kids are trying to get out of what they're born into. Not that there's nothing wrong with what they're born into, but they want to make something of themselves. And, you know, we're in a fortunate position to sort of, you know, just, for argument's sake, just supply a venue. That's all we're doing. <laughs> we're supplying a venue and giving them some direction. And I think we're very lucky to be able to do that. So, no, I wouldn't say that. It obviously made me sad for a long while. Well, another a real sad one, Gerald McLennan. You know, he's a real nice fella. You know, you know, um, yeah, there's, there's loads, there's loads. I don't want to say in case I forget someone else, but Gerald McLennan sticks in my mind because he was a really good fighter. But like, like most trainers, you're blessed if you get a good fighter, you're blessed with a good fighter. You work as hard with a good fighter as you do with, with someone who's not so good. It's, you know, it's just, it's just about time and effort and um, meeting nice people. And as I've said before, you. You know, you meet some really strange people in boxing. <laughs> you meet some really nice people. You meet some, but you know, hopefully you just get some friends for life. And we've been lucky to have had that. Like from when we started, we've still got kids who come to the gym. And you know, I've trained kids who, who now bring their kids to the gym. It's, it's, it's an all a knock on effect because the boxing for some reason has that bit of um, street credibility, you know. And, and, it, and it's a hook and it brings kids in here and it gets them off the street and it's, it's the same old thing, you've heard it before, without these places. But it's true, without these places, a lot of these kids would never know where to go. We're just lucky that we're, we're here and we've got really good people around us. We've probably got 40 people a week that volunteer here on a voluntary basis. They're all vetted, they're all CRB yeah. and, they, and they, all, they all contribute and, and they do it without getting paid. With organisations like this, you do have a you have a plan, and you sort of like you look t to the future. But really, it's, it's day by day. You know what I mean? The next day rolls into the next day, and then you, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, the future is going to change because the whole area is changing, and 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 again, where these places are in the cities, the the land value of them now is so much, and the rates. Are, you know, if I told you what our rates are, you you, you, you wouldn't believe it. And and our rent is really expensive here. You know, it's like hand to mouth. So like all these places, it's, it's precarious. Yeah.
so you just live it day by day. Yeah, I think we'll always do the peacock because like I said, it's, it's Tony's passion, it's my passion, it's what, it's what we do, we enjoy doing it. As I said, we've got other businesses and we probably put more time and effort into here. Although, you know, you don't always see it, but there's always something to do here and um, yeah, we're just lucky to be fortunate enough to be able to afford to put our time into here. Well, to be fair, it was a it was something that Tony spoke about probably four years ago when Tony first moved here because he's been living here four years, um, and we said obviously we're going to develop the site, so we needed somewhere else to relocate the professionals. Um, we're hoping to still have a presence in Canny Town as a public gym and keep the name going there because obviously that's where it started. Right, so this is the view from Canny Town Bridge, yeah, in 1943. This was taken by one of our members, one of our old members serious when he was elect, uh, elect, apprenticed electrician and they had to do a survey photo yeah and as you can see he's still getting bombed they're, they're tidying up with the bricks and the wood and getting ready yeah for the future you see that yeah and remember this here as a point of reference that there is a point of reference because this is today and if you look just there, you can see the same point of reference, you see? And this is what we plan to do for what's happening now in the future, here. And then you can see how we're saying this, the area has just changed completely. This lot's already built, and there's the, the next stages, and this part down here is the new gym. Yeah. The funny thing is, our granddad and his brother had a club here on this piece of ground here. In the old days, and you can see the just which was just over here called St Luke's Park. They used to have a boxing club there. <laughs> but every now and again, things move on and things change. And you know, with the world as it is at the moment, you just can't have anybody walking in your gym saying good morning, it's just not how it is. Well listen, we've still got some really uh, good fighters down the gym. Um, unfortunately they're not tied to us, they're with other people and they'll still be using the gym on a daily basis and we'll probably go down there on spa, but our main base will be here. How would I describe the peak of? Yeah, it's not easy. You know, it's a bit more of a gym, it's more of a community centre. Success breeds success and to see the whole team's doing well and it is uh, motivating which makes you want to step your game up. It's a little bit of friendly competition, but we're happy for each other. Like. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it makes me feel like I have a purpose. Um, home of sport and friendship, really.